Welcome back to the Crochet Chronos. Those are my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do a Mandela doily. Now doilies aren't something I do very often so you don't see a lot of doilies here in my collection on YouTube. I was really compelled by the stitch work that's involved with this because it's something different other than a blanket. I'm not much of a crochet thread person but you could use Aunt Lydia's crochet thread as what it's suggesting with a 2.1 millimeter hook or a US 3 but I decided to use a 2.5 millimeter um, size crochet hook. Now here's the thing and that I believe is a size C as in a cat. You now here's the thing as I mentioned. So there's Peyton's Grace you need seven colors. So I just went in my collection of Peyton's Grace and I randomly chose seven colors that kind of go together. And instead of using A, B, C, D, E, F, G right here I decided to just write the letter again and just choose at random what the label of the ball was. So this is Citadel. So I just looked at it and by the time I got to E I said okay that can be Citadel and I crocheted the sample pr pretty much blind in the sense that I didn't have a colorway in my head and I just let it play its own little story. So let me show you the sample. The sample in Peyton's Grace will be 20 inches diameter. If it's crochet thread with the hook size it's recommending then you will have about a 14 inch doily. So it will change the size. So let me show you the sample. So here is the sample just like you see. So it's 20 inches wide. You have to wet block this at the end. So you just wet it and then just lay it flat and just kind of like manipulate it out and it will sit flat. So that was pretty awesome. I was really worried at the end that it wasn't gonna sit flat and then I wet blocked it and everything was good. So when we go to look at this particular pattern you're going to notice the thing that was my compelling thing of all is that there is a crochet diagram to be able to follow. I will be following this along as we're going in today's tutorial. So as we kick off today you will have the written instructions as it's suggesting. So if you wanna use those you can and if you wanna use the diagram you can and if you just wanna follow along. So I am going to do all of the rounds here and you will notice that the starting and stopping places pretty much uh, just b bounce around a little bit so you just can see it. You just look for the chain th that you're going to do and then you'll just rotate and read this in a counterclockwise position. And I can tell that because the stitch uh, the slip stitch is here on the right and the chaining is up on the left. Therefore when you chain you continue along and the slip stitch is usually the end. So I know that this is a counterclockwise uh, reading when we go to do this. So as we're progressing the first few stitches are the first few is gonna be pretty quick and then as we start getting more and more complex you'll notice that we'll slow down a bit but we will do the whole thing. So there's gonna be 17 rounds on this whole thing and uh, video wise it may not be that long but this took me I would say about three to four hours to be able to make and uh, it's a smaller hook but and there's a little bit of detail and overall it's actually not a hard pattern. So I don't even know the level on this one here it says that it's uh, intermediate. Okay I'll agree with that and without further ado let's grab our hook and let's begin to play. So the first thing you, you need to do is assign your colors. I don't want the same one twice. I, I just don't like that. So what I'm gonna do is reassign my A to G again and see what I come up with for a second time. So I'll do that first and then move along. So I'm going to begin and I'm gonna start off with my color A. So I've assigned my colors here. What I'll do is in the article I'll put what this version is then for the color lineup. We wanna create a, a, a magic circle so just lay it into your hand like so and just use two fingers and rotate over. Now this is an intermediate level so there are videos just for magic rings. So we're just gonna go over top of the two fingers and then grab your hook and pull through and then release it, your fingers out. So I'm going to begin and I want to do a locking so I'm just gonna chain one just to lock that in. So everything I do I need to make sure that both of these strands are underneath the stitch work and then at the end of this uh, round we'll pull it tight and then it'll look sloppy until you get to the end. So let's uh, begin this round. So round number one we're going to start off and we're going to chain a total of four. So one, two, three, and four and then in the center in this ring again we want to put three more sorry two more um, cluster or like trebles. So you're just gonna wrap the hook twice and then you're gonna go in. So they're gonna be a cluster so then they're made up of, of trebles. So you're just gonna pull through, pull through two and then two and don't finish it. So normally you would pull through the final two and it's done but you wanna collect those. So you're gonna wrap again twice and then going into the ring and then pull through and then pull through two and two and because this is the beginning cluster there will only be three loops on the hook 
yarn over and pull through all three. So the beginning cluster is done. So to get to the next cluster you have to chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And in the magic ring again making sure you're going up over the two strands you're going to begin the clusters. So just wrap the hook twice and going in pull through, pull through two, and two and just hold. Okay so don't finish it and do that again. So wrap twice. So you wanna do it a total of three times. And now that it's not the beginning cluster you're looking for four loops to be on the hook by the time you get the process done. Okay so you have your four loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all four and then chain five to go to the next one. One, two, three, four, five and then you'll cluster and then chain five. So you're looking for eight of these all together. So currently you see two. So join me back here after you get all eight done and make sure you do chain five after the last one and that's where I will pick you up in just a moment. So now that I've gone all the way around I wanna join it to the top of the first one. Do you see where they're grouped together? Right there where I pulled all together. That's where I want you to join. So you're gonna say okay the middle center still looks like crap. I don't know if that's the right word but see how it doesn't look good. So what you have to do before you continue just pull this a large loop and just keep it going. And you wanna pull on the straggler that is leading to the end of the ball. And what this is going to do it's gonna pull that strand so that it will form a circle. And you're going to stop as soon as you see a full circle is formed. Okay so now you see a circle. Now you're going to turn it to the back. You cannot just cut this yarn right as is. You're going to have to get a, a tapestry needle and you're going to wanna feed it in. I'm only gonna show changing the yarn once and this will be it for the whole tutorial. So when I say you're going to do it, so you're just gonna feed it through the project once. Then go back in the opposite direction twice. And then finally third time is a charm. And therefore you can cut this now to the project and it will never fall out on you as long as you do that three times. So whenever you're finishing a round. Okay so let's put this back on. So we haven't cut this one yet. So we're just gonna keep it long enough so that you can do a tail. And you're just gonna pull it through. And you need to use that tapestry needle to hide in your yarn. There's no point weaving in your ends with something like this because it will fall out. So using the tapestry needle I want you to go back and forth. And I would probably recommend to you that stay within the chain work itself or you can go down. So here's the front side so just turn it to the back. So you could either go down like this and go once. And when you pull this don't change the shape of this. Okay so just pull it so it's taut and then go back up. You always have to go through a different path to get this stuck. And then finally third time is a charm. And therefore you can cut it safely to the project and you will do that each and every time you need to change colors. So this is what it looks like now. You have eight of those petals in the middle and then you have five Sorry, you have eight chain five spaces. Let's begin round number two starting with the next color. In round number two we're gonna start in a chain five space. So we're going to do two popcorns in each one of these spaces that are separated by a chain three. So you'll notice that chain threes are consistent. So just choose any of the chain five spaces. And you're going to start off with by chaining a total of just attach it with a slip stitch and then chain three. So one, two and three. So the popcorns here are made up of five double crochets that, that create that. So to do that this is considered one. So do four more double crochets. So and go right up over top of the straggler and then you don't need to worry about sewing that in later. So this is considered three, four and five. So there's five double crochets. So the chain three plus the four equals five. Now you're just gonna take that loop out and go in the top which is the chain three in this case and put that loop back on and pull it through. And that's your popcorn. 
So to do the second popcorn in that same space you have to chain three first. So one, two, three and because you've gone around the chain five just move it out of the way and I would go up over top of that straggler once again. So put in five double crochets into that same space. So one, two, three, four and five and then let it go and go to the first one. Put the loop back on and pull through and that will conclude that one. So you're gonna chain three to jump to the next popcorn. So one, two, three. So each one of these chain five spaces is gonna have a popcorn, chain three and then a popcorn and then you have to put chain three to advance to the next one. So I want you to do that all the way around. This is round number two. So I just finished my last popcorn. I gotta chain three before I can slip stitch to the beginning one. So I would go right to where they're joined. Okay, so right where you pulled through all of them and that will stay on the top. So that would be how you finish that one. So just weave in your ends now. Cut this yarn, weave it in and we'll begin round number three with the color E as an elephant. So we're now going to begin round number three. Just know that three and four are the same color so you're not gonna fasten off at the end. Do you see how they're in groups of two? They're sharing the same space. They want you to go in between any chain three space but make sure it's in between a group of two. So here's a group of two, there's a group of two, there's a chain. So you're gonna attach and pull through. So now you're going to chain eight. So one, two, three. That's a double crochet and this is a chain five space. So four, five, six, seven and eight. Going into the next space that you have right here the chain three you're going to double crochet and then chain five. One, two, three, four, five and then go to the next chain three space after the next popcorn and double crochet and then chain five and you're gonna do that all the way around. So nice easy round and do not fasten off at the end of this round. This is round number three. When you get around to number three you're going to join to the third chain up. So one, two, three and that's where you're going to join and you're not gonna fasten off. So each one of the spaces in between each of the bobbles or each of the popcorn should have a double crochet popping out of it. So we need to then move on to round number four. So keep the same color and let's begin. So in order to start round number four you have to slip stitch to this chain five space. So you're just gonna slip over and then chain three. So one, two, three. And in the same space you're gonna put five more double crochet. So let's count those out together. So this is one, two, three, four and five. So with the chaining of three and those five that gives you the number six. So in order to move on you have to then in the next chain five space apply six double crochets into each one uh, to each one of these chain five spaces going all the way around. So please put in six double crochet in each of the chain five spaces going around and I'll see you at the end of round number four. So just finishing up the last one I have six double crochets in the last space which I should. Just join it to the beginning the top of the chain three and let's get rid of this yarn. We're gonna move on to round number five next using the color C as in cat. Let's move on to round number five going to start off with a slip knot as always and what we want to do is that we want to start with the first double crochet of any of the uh, six. So just to start with any one and recommending you do a standing single crochet. So going in with it already on the hook and just wrap the yarn around and pull through but do not pull through the first loop yet. Just yarn over and pull through two and that's a standing single crochet and it looks finished each and every time. Just pull this a little snug. So you're going to single crochet in the tops of every one of the double crochets that exist and then what we're going to do is that when we get to in between we're going to then come down and we're going to front post double crochet this one right here. So when you do that you're gonna wrap Give it a bit of slack. So going in, pull through. Just give it a little bit of more slack than you probably normally would and then pull through two and two. So it builds back up so it covers it like this. So starting in the next 
grouping of six, single crochet, Okay, so that six is done. And then jumping on down. Now in the original sample when I did this, so this is just a front post double crochet, just give it a bit of slack and come back up. So when I originally did this for whatever reason, one of these I missed and I only put five. Actually that's, oh here it is. So I actually did only five. So in order to counter correct that, I put two single crochets in top of the one just to make sure that I kept my balance. So instead of frogging it back out, so if that's happened to you, I wouldn't worry about it too much but there's always a way to, to correct. So can you continue this all the way around for round number five and I'll see you at the end. We are going to eliminate this yarn at the end and move on to round number six in just a moment. So I'm finishing up round number five. Don't forget you have to come down into this post before you proceed and join. So we're going to then just join it to the first single crochet and we're going to move to round number six where we're going to switch to the color F as in Frank. At any point in this tutorial you may see that this is gonna start to buckle. You have to trust in it. Um, the stitching is right. I've proved it. So if it starts to look like it's buckling on you, um, just give it a chance because it probably will settle down in the future. So I'm not worried about it at this point but I just wanna let you know. So let's uh, move on to round number six using the color F. So we're going to start and I wanna show you a cheating technique. So you can either go to a back loop of any one of the stitches. So it's just gonna be one double crochet in the back loop of any of the stitches going around. But when you do that and you go into the back loop and then you chain three, it always looks off. So what I'm going to suggest to you is that just get it ready in your hand and on the hook and pinch it so that this doesn't rotate. So you're just gonna wrap the hook and with the pinch you're gonna go into the back loop of one of them and put that straggler down in and then yarning over pulling it through and because you're pinching it you should see three loops on the hook. Yarn over pull through two and two. That's a standing double crochet and that will make it look like it belongs. So you're still gonna work your way on a back loop double crochet all the way around so one stitch is applied to each one. So this is allowing it to grow properly. So what I want you to do is just do this. So one double crochet in the back loop all the way around for round number six. When you get to the end of round number six you are just going right into the back loops of everything right into the very end and then you're just going to join it to the top of the first. If you did a chain three it's the top of the chain three and if you did the standing double then it's the top of the standing double is where you're going to join. Let's get rid of this yarn and move on to round number seven and we're gonna move on then. Let's move on to round number seven using the color B as in Bob and we're using the color blush here. I'm going to show you another cheating technique. You know this is the whole point of tutorials. So we need to put three stitches together as one and then separate those with chain fours. Now when we're going to do this it's going to be a treble that's gonna happen and so you can attach it to any one of the stitches that you would like. Okay so let's just do that. Now it says to chain four in the instructions and technically that is absolutely correct but when you go to attach like this that's already kind of like already a step up. So what I'm going to suggest is after you attach only chain three. So one, two, three and this will be the same height as the treble and that counts as the very first one. So you're just gonna wrap the hook twice and then go to the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and two and hold it. Don't finish it and do the next stitch after that. So they're in sets of three all the way around. So this is the beginning one so you're just gonna yarn over and pull through all three. Now to do the next set you have to chain four. So one, two, three, four and then start in the very next stitch after this one and pick up the next three and do the same thing. So just wrap twice and pull through two and two. Don't finish it and so you're looking for four loops to be left on your hook after you picked up the three. Okay so there's the four loops. Yarn over pull through all four loops and then chain four. So one, two, three, four. So I want you to continue all the way around. Now as per the instructions you should count 37 of these groups 
all the way around. Make sure that you do that. Now in the original I actually had a stitch left over. So one of them if you look really carefully has four of these instead of three and that was just to hide it and you barely noticed it unless I said something. Well hopefully. So let's say uh, continue around. So just uh, put the three together and then separate them with the chain four and I'll see you at the end of this round. Round number seven. So I'm coming up around to the end of number seven. I have four stitches left. I shouldn't. So th this happened to me on the original sample. I'm not gonna worry about it. So what I'm going to do is use all four stitches in order to put them together so there will be a four together when we go to do that. So um, sometimes you gotta fake it or make it. I'm not sure why that's happening to me especially on the second time through. Could be a pattern issue but it could be me as well and I'm not worried. So I'm gonna put four together instead of three and that will bring it together. Now unless you say something to somebody that I bet they won't notice. So you're gonna put the four together and then chain three or chain four. So one, two, three, four. And when you go to join it, join it to where they're put together at the top. And we're gonna get rid of this color and move on to round number eight next. So you should be able to count 37 of these things going all the way around and meet me back here in just a moment as we move on to round number eight using the color D as in dog. To move on to round number eight using the color D in my case it's called natural and I'm just gonna go into a chain four space and I'm going to attach it like that and I'm going to chain a total of three. So one, two, three. I'm going to put four more double crochets into that chain four space. So with the chaining of three and this four it gives you the count of five. Okay, so once you get your five in you're going to jump to the next chain five, uh, four space and put five double crochets. So put five double crochets in each one of the chain four spaces all the way around and this will be round number eight. I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming up to the end of number eight and once you get that done just slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet or chain three whatever you want it to do. So we're gonna get rid of this color. We're gonna move on to round number nine which is about the halfway point for this particular project and we are using the color A as an apple. In my case it will be Citadel. So let's begin to do that next. Let's begin round number nine and we're going to start. So I would start probably not where you finished. I would just start one back just as my normal thing I would do and you're going to just go in and I would do a standing single crochet. Now you've done this before so just let's just put it in here. So there's your standing single and just bury over the top. So you're going to single crochet in the remaining of those in that group. So you're gonna single crochet in all of these double crochets. So let's just do that first. So if you wanna count it you can. So there's a total of five in a row. And we're going to do an expansion. So remember down here how we went and came down. That's what we're gonna do here too. So just wrap in the hook and come in here and just attach around. Give it a little bit of slack and then pull through two and two so it comes up. Okay, so jumping to the next double. So there's five in a row. I don't know if you need to count it or not. If you trust yourself it's up to you. Just put your hook into the window and watch TV. So then come down, front post double. Give it a bit of slack and come back up. See, so please do this all the way around. This is round number nine. As you're coming around on number nine here, I actually, this is the second time filming because I forgot to come down. So make sure you don't forget to come down on that last one. That's your last stitch up there and then just join it to the first single crochet. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna move on now to round number 10 and let's get rid of this color. We're gonna go to the color G as in giraffe and we'll be right back in just a moment. So as you move on to round number 10, you're gonna notice it's kind of buckling a bit, relax, just go with it, go with it, work it, work it, own it. <laughs> So if it's starting to look like it's buckling on you, you're not alone. I am too. But don't worry about it. It should flatten out. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's begin round number 10. You're going to start with the color G as in giraffe. It's the first time using it. And we are going to focus on these front post double crochets only. So each one of those front post double crochets are going to get these cluster stitches that I'm about to show you. So just choose any one of them. Doesn't matter which one. And uh, we're gonna start. And we're going to just slip stitch. Now it says to chain four and then start the beginning cluster. Now remember what I said before about starting it like this. I would recommend you start with chaining three only. So one, two, three. Now in the same one you want to wrap the hook twice and you're doing clusters. So just going in, pull through, pull through two 
and two and hold it. And then wrap twice again and in, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. So now you got three on here. This is the three, pull through all three. Now you're going to work in that same spot again but before you do, chain three. So one, two, three and in the same spot you're gonna do another cluster. So just wrap twice and just do that again three times like you did before. So because it's not the beginning one anymore, you're gonna have a total of four loops in the hook after you get the process done. See there's the four. So yarn over, pull through all four. So now you're gonna jump to the next front post double crochet over here and you're gonna start a new cluster. So you're not chaining anything in between those when you're jumping the front post double crochet. So this is gonna be a bit of a slow going um, rotation for you. There's a lot of work in here but you're gaining a lot of height so just keep that in mind. So once you get your four loops on there you see pull through and then chain three. So one, two, three and in the same one you're doing it. So it looks like in this case because of the color green looks like you're adding leaves and etc. to your sample. That's completely fluke in my case but uh, you never know how it's gonna turn out. So the colors I did put were random. So once you have your four in there, pull through all of those and then jump to the new one and then start a cluster, chain three and then a cluster and you'll do that all the way around. This is round number 10. So I'm coming up to the end of round number 10 and I'm just going to slip stitch it to the top of the first one, the first cluster and then that'll be it. So let's get rid of this color. Let's move on to number 11 using the color C as in kitty cat. I guess that's the K. So it's C as in cat. <laughs> Okay, let's begin round number 11. We're going to attach to a chain three space that's in between where they're separating. So you don't see any spaces here. They're just in between, almost like in between the leaves. So that's a leaf and a leaf and this is in between. So we're just going to slip stitch to join it and we're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and in the same chain three space I need you to double crochet four more times. So with the chaining of three and these four double crochet that gives you the magic number of five. So we've done that before right? So there you go there's five. So jumping all the way to the next space that you have here is that you're just going to before you jump though you gotta chain two. So one and two and then jump and then five double crochets into the next one. Next chain three space. And then before you can jump because it's a long way to get there you gotta chain two and then jump. So I want you to do this all the way around. This is round number 11. So let's finish up round number 11 together. So there's gonna be five double crochets in the final. And then chain two and then join to the top of the first chain three that you started with. So that is round number 11. Let's move on to round number 12 next using the letter F as in Frank and let's begin to do that next. So let's begin round number 12. So let's start off in the beginning of any one of the double crochets in the group and so each one of these double crochets are going to get a single crochet. I'm going to do a standing single crochet because I'm feeling fabulous and fierce today. <laughs> so yeah I don't even know why that's funny. So it's probably not. So I want to single crochet in each one of these double crochets and exactly what we already know from before. So once you come in between these spaces here, I'm going to jump down and I wanna jump in here. Okay, so what I want to do is that when I double crochet down, I wanna go around in between the space and just kinda of pick it up like that. Okay, so I'm double crocheting down in there and I'm just going to give it a bit of slack. Just taking my time. So see how it's grabbing? So grab it the same way for each one so it looks consistent and then start in the next double crochet available to you. So there's a total of five in a row. You don't need to count it unless you're feeling not so fierce <laughs> or fabulous today. But if your counting is, is accurate you think then keep on going. So come to the next one. So just double crochet, come down in and just wrap around it and give it a bit of slack and then come back up. And that's how I want you to do it. So this is round number 12. Let's continue our journey. I'll see you at the end of this round. 
So I'm finishing up number 12. I make sure I have to come down into that space and then just slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet and let's call that quits for today. So we're going to then move on to round number 13 using the color E as in elephant. Let's begin to do that. I keep thinking of Jumbo the movie every time I say that. So now let's move on to round number 13. So let's begin lucky number 13 and I wanna start off in one single crochet after this front post coming down. We're gonna do the back loop only. Okay, so if you wanna do a standing double which I'm about to do, you can do that or just go into the back loop and chain three and then double crochet into the same one or sorry, uh, just chain three and that, that's your first one. So there's my standing. So what I want to do is double crochet in the back loop only going all the way around except for those front post, uh, sorry, those front uh, double crochets that are going down. So there's only gonna be five of these in a row and then you'll end up with the in front of that one here. So you're gonna skip over that and you're gonna chain two, one, two and then come to the next single crochet and do the next five. So you're jumping over those ones that are coming down. Just like that, right? So there's another grouping of five. So chain two and then jump over that one and then start in the next double or single crochet in the back loop only. Please do this all the way around. This is lucky round 13. So I'm at the end of lucky number 13, just chain two and then join it to the very first one. In my case it was a standing double crochet. It could have been a chain three for you. So let's get rid of this color and let's move on to 14 using the color B as in Bob. Let me see you there in just a moment. So let's begin lucky number 14 assuming it is lucky. <laughs> so we're going to begin in a chain two space just like there and we're going to do clusters and chains and you know lions and tigers and bears. So we're going to begin right in the chain two and you're just going to join it. So I'm going to give the advice that I gave before because this is gonna be part of a cluster. So you, you're just going to join it and it says to chain four. I would only chain three. So one, two, three. And in the same one there you want to put in two more trebles that are, are going with it. So it's, it's a treble. So you're just gonna come through but don't finish it and then wrap it again and coming in and don't finish it and there you go. So then once you have your three because it's a beginning and cluster you're going to just pull through all three and then that's done. So now you're going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and come to the middle one of the next grouping of five and single crochet in and then as soon as you have that done I need you then to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and now we're gonna do another one of these clusters. So wrap twice and going into the space to chain two space pull through two and two. Don't finish it and do that a total of three times. And then once you see four loops on the hook you know you're done. So pull through and then chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and come to the middle one of the next grouping single crochet and then chain five, one, two, three, four, five and then do another cluster into here. So please do that all the way around for number 14. Okay, let's finish off number 14 together. So I'm just coming around and I'm doing my last cluster in the last chain two space. Okay, and then chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Come to the middle one and then chain five to get to the top of the original. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's get rid of this color after we join it to the top and I have a great suggestion for you in the next round. So we'll see you on round number 15 in just a second. So let's begin round number 15 with the color A. In my case it will be Citadel again. So what I want you to point out is that when you're going to look at these, these clusters are where you're only gonna play. So cluster, cluster, cluster. So you're gonna ignore these other pieces in, in between. So what you need to do is that you need to go here. So naturally you would want to go so it's gonna loop around but this is considered a stitch and it will be considered out of alignment. So you have to come in the top of this. So when you're looking at the next one it's right here. 
you see that? So I want you to join it. It's right where I just showed you. And you're going to chain. So just join and then chain three. So one, two, and three. Now in the same spot where you are, you're going to double crochet. And then you're going to chain three. So one, two, and three. And then you're going to come in to this particular one down here. Or sorry, you're going to then come into the same one. And you're going to double crochet twice. Just like that. Now to jump to the next one over here, you have to chain five to get there. So one, two, three, four, five. And then come to the top. Do you see it? It's right there. So you're going to double crochet twice. And then chain three. One, two, three. And then double crochet twice more. So if you can just remember that that's on the tips. That's awesome. And then chain five to jump. And then you'll jump over and do the same thing. So this is round number 15. When you get to the end of number 15, you just change your five and then you're just going to join it to the first chain three. The top of the first chain three. Let's get rid of this color and move on to round number 16 using the color D as in dog. Let's begin round number 16. This round will take you a bit of time. So just uh, take your time and, and try to enjoy the process as you go. So it's actually really not a hard round to be able to do. It's just a matter of, it's just time consuming. So I want you to choose any one of the chain threes that are in between. So this one or this one. So right there. And you're going to join. And we're gonna start off and we're gonna do clusters when we go to do this. So we're just gonna join. And like I said before, you, it says to chain four, but I'd only chain three. So one, two, three. And I want you to do these um, treble clusters once again. Okay, so just wrapping pulls through two and two, but don't finish it and do another one. So this is the beginning cluster that you need to do. So there's a total of three clusters in each one of these spaces. So you're just gonna chain only, um, what do we have here? Chain only one and then do the next cluster into the same one. I've done the clusters before so I'm not so slow at this moment. Okay and then once you see four on the hook you're done. And then do another cluster. So before you do that though chain one to start the next one. And then do your final. So essentially each one of these has three sets of clusters in it. So then pull it all through. So you have to then get yourself down over here into this spot. So you're just going to chain three. So one, two, three and single crochet right into this chain. Okay, so just go around the whole thing. Just go into the space and then one, two, three and then start your next grouping of three clusters. So start the first one. And then chain one and then do the next one. Okay, you see four in there. Chain one and then one more. Okay, so pull through all four. And now you're going to chain three. So one, two, three, single into the next space. And then chain three. So one, two, three and then start your next set of clusters. So this is what it will look like and I'll see you at the end of this round. This is round number 16 and only one more round to go. So I'm coming up to the final of number 16. So I'm just gonna chain my three and then attach it to the top of the first cluster that we had started with right there. So we're going to do round number 17 next which is the final round. So get your final color E ready and let's begin to do that in just a moment. Let's get rid of this yarn color first. So let's begin the final round number 17. We're gonna be doing some picos and we're gonna do some double crochets. I am gonna change the pattern and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna change that pattern but I will show you the way it's written anyway. So what I want you to concentrate on is that you see that there's three groups 
of these double crochets these are sorry these treble clusters right. So you wanna play within the, the between the one group and between the other. So just look at it like there's two sets there. So let's just go between the first and the second group and we're gonna do our first one. So we're just gonna attach and then chain three. So one, two, three and then double crochet into that same one. Now you're going to do what is called as a pico. So you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and slip into the top of that first and pull through and through and then double crochet twice more into that same space. I'll show the pico again in just a moment. So you can see a double crochet, pico and a double crochet. I want you to jump to the next space okay right there and you're gonna do the same thing. So two double crochet and then a pico. So chain three. So one, two, three and then just slip in and pull through and through and then two more double crochet. So I'm going to show you the way that the pattern is suggesting. So it tells you to go down right up over top of these this whole thing. So it tells you to do this. Sorry, let me just lean forward just to double check. It, it is a double crochet going down. Just making sure. So it is a double crochet. So it's telling you to go around and just do this. I don't like that because this is never gonna be sta staying stable. So this can move around and you can see how sloppy, uh, sloppy it can look. So that's just the way it is and that's the way it's written but to me that really bothers me a lot. So what I decided to do is that in this single crochet I applied one half double crochet itself and that will make up the height. Okay so if I do a double crochet there it will be too tall. So instead of going under here it's just attached there. So you have to decide the way that you're gonna do it. To move on you're gonna go between the next two clusters here that you see and you'll start off with two double crochet and then a pico. So chain three and slip in and then two double crochet into the same spot. Okay once that's done you just jump to the next space in between. Start off with two double crochet and then a pico. So chain three and then two double crochet. And then once that's done you're ready to move on. So you can either go around a double crochet around this if you feel like it or you can just do a half double crochet to where I'm suggesting. So that's something that you'll have to decide for yourself and this is how you'll complete round number 17 which is the end which I'll see you at the end of this round to conclude today's pro project. So now that I've just come to the end of 17 I've just now done my half double crochet as I explained already before why I was doing that and I'm just gonna join to the beginning chain three. So tighten everything up and you're gonna weave in your ends and let's take a look at our project in just a moment. So I'm just gonna weave in and I'll be right back. So here's our final sample. So you'll notice that it's not sitting down completely. So what you need to do is just take this to your kitchen sink or whatever sink you have and you wanna dampen it out. Do not wring it out when you do it. So dampen it and then lay it down on a flat surface that's okay to dry. Maybe put a towel down and just lay it, uh, just lay it out just exactly the way that you want it displayed and this will uh, completely uh, take all, all the buckling. So just give it a bit of a stretch and etc. So that's it for today. This is the Crochet Mandela. I really really like this pattern. It's a kind of fun. It's a mind exercise but it's also nice to do something different. So have a great day and we hope to see your creativity available online. So that's it and it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com and Duck Now. <laughs> see ya. Bye bye. Just as a full disclaimer this has already been blocked but I'm going to show you how I'm gonna do it anyway. So it's actually pretty easy. So first thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need either a paper towel or you can use a dish cloth in order to do it like a, a, a drying cloth and then you're just gonna use a little bit of water. The goal is is not to soak the project. The goal is is just to get it a little bit damp and the goal is is not to wring it out. So all you're just gonna do is that you're just gonna run the tap just slightly, slightly like so and just go boom 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 and I'm kind of rotating it in my hands. So I don't want it to get completely soaked. Okay? So it's now wet. 
So it's not completely soaked. It's dripping a little bit of water. Do not wring it out. Oh. Yeah. So what I just do is I just I just kind of compress it. Like so, to get out any excess water if it's too wet, but you shouldn't have any water falling out of it. The next thing you want to do is that you want to go to your paper towel because that is going to be where you're going to block it down on top of that. So let's take you there next. So the next thing you want to do is that you want to take your Mandela here and you want to look for the right side up in order to make it play properly. So I can clearly see that. So what I can do is that I'm going to lay it down onto the paper towel like so and then I'm going to start just kind of stretching it out a little bit even if it falls off the paper towel I'm not too worried about it but what you want to just do is do you want to just start and get it to pull out now some people use like um, those uh, rubber pads and then they pin it down you can do that if you wish um, I find with myself I've never really had to do that unless I'm doing anything um, um, like I'm stiffening a project so I'm just grabbing the outsides just kind of making it look as completely round as possible and then once I get it to sit flat, now it may take a little bit of manipulation for you. This has already been blocked, but when I first started it, the outside, for example, wasn't sitting down so flat. So what you just have to do is just maintain it a little bit and really look at it and then just set it and forget it. That's like so Ron Popeil, I know. But you set it and forget it and then come back to it maybe the next day and then it should be good to go. And then when you take it off the paper towel, the paper towel will have absorbed the water and uh, this should be completely dry and that's how I would block if that was me.